Welcome to Unit 3, Art as Cultural Heritage, Lesson 19, The Islamic World. Islam is one of the world's three major religions and presently is the fastest growing religion. The dominance of the Islamic faith is seen primarily in the Middle East where it has greatly influenced the art and architecture of that region. Lesson 19 introduces the reader to the art and architecture of Islam in Arabia, Spain, and India. The objectives for this lesson are to summarize the historical development of Islam as a world religion, discuss art and architectural forms most common to Islamic cultures, use terms that are particular to Islamic art and architecture, compare characteristics of Islamic art to Christian artistic traditions in Europe, and recognize the importance of visual pattern at aesthetic pleasure in Islamic art. The topics we'll be covering are Arab lands, Spain, Persia, and India, the Mughal Empire. One thing that doesn't get discussed very often when talking about Islam is some of its history, particularly between the 9th and 14th centuries where Islamic society really thrived. There were great libraries located in the cities of Baghdad, which is now in modern-day Iraq, and Granada, Spain. Scholars from all over the world would come to study biology, science, mathematics, and world religions. As a matter of fact, the Islamic scholars were responsible for translating the Bible into multiple different languages. All of this is in contrast, of course, to what was going on in the West, particularly in Europe, where the church dominated the thoughts of the people in the sense that they controlled all the books. They didn't have actually great libraries like this that were open to the public. It was mostly religious figures that controlled the dissemination of such things. As a matter of fact, most of Europe was also illiterate at that particular time as well. The publication of some of the texts on biology, science, and mathematics certainly helped the Renaissance artists in their research about scientific applications towards art. This slide is of the Great Mosque in Kairouan, Tunisia. It was built between 836 and 835. There are some distinct characteristics to mosques that are common to all mosques, but they do vary in size. On the right-hand side of the photograph, you see the tower. They can vary in size and shape between different mosques, but that is called a minaret. Minarets are used to call worshippers to prayer, and it's a way to locate the local mosque. On the opposite side of the building, you have the mirab, which is a niche on the back wall that is covered by a porch area. This area points the way to Mecca, and that is the direction where people pray to. Since you won't see much representation of the human form in most of Islam, in this slide we have the text of the Quran. The Quran is the most... This photograph is of the Court of the Lions from the Alhambra in Granada, Spain. The Alhambra was a royal palace and fort for Muslim rulers back in the 1300s. The decoration on this is so complex that it's almost hard to pick up that this is a mixture of geometric patterns and calligraphic text. Many of the decorations from the Court of the Lions are made of plaster, marble, alabaster, glazed tile, and such. This gives it a translucent quality. It glows in the light. The Alhambra was a city within itself. It was abandoned in 1492 by its Muslim rulers. In this slide we have a map of the Islamic world. As you can see there is a wide expanse of Islamic influence all the way from Spain over to India and as low as Egypt and up into Vienna. In our first slide of the Great Mosque in Tunisia, we were unable to see the mirab. The same Persian stylings from the mirab we just saw are applied to this mir e arab madrasa. This is located in Bukhara, Uzbekistan. It was made between 1535 and 1536. A madrasa is a Muslim theological school. Here is where the teachings of Muhammad and the Islamic text of the Quran is studied. 
When Islam spread to India, it was done so by the Mughal Empire. The makeup of the culture at the time in India was Hindu, Jain, Zoroastrian, and Christian. This painting might confuse everybody because there are representations of the human form. The Mughal Empire was extremely tolerant of this. As a matter of fact, they promoted it because on the opposite end, they felt this was more of a tribute to God. This painting is attributed to Sultan Muhammad. It is Sultan Sanjar and the old woman from the Kamze, which is the five poems of Nizami. This was made between 1539 and 1543. One of the rulers to come around shortly after the painting that we last looked at was Akbar. Akbar embraced all of the religions of the region in India and combined them all into one religion in which he put himself the ruler of. This is the interior of the Divani Khas, which is Akbar's throne room. Mughal rulers were very lavish and they threw their wealth around. The term Mughal comes from Mughal rulers such as Akbar. We are now at the end of our lesson on the Islamic world. We'll leave you with this image of the Taj Mahal in India, built between 1632 and 1648. Also have a close-up over there on the left-hand side of the uh, center portion of the building, as you see uh, the one directly in front of the path of the waterway. If you remember from earlier on in this uh, course, we covered the Taj Mahal, and it was a tomb for the Shah Jahan's favorite wife. He is now also buried there as well. Thank you very much for listening.